Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 10th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Fortinet advised its customers late last week of a vulnerability in its Fortinet 40 OS and 40 proxy products. This is significant as this is an irregular update and not following Fortinet's usual patch dates. Now, Fortinet, as far as I know, did not provide a reason for the scheduling of uh, this update. So whether or not it's already exploited or so, we don't really know. A lot of it was really only released uh, to customers directly and not made public. I'm not aware of a public exploit at this point. It's an authentication bypass that we're dealing with here that would give an attacker administrative access to the admin interface of uh, the device. A software update has been made available and customers definitely should apply the update soon. In the uh, advisory that is only accessible to customers uh, directly, there are also some mitigation techniques that you may want to apply. And as usual, of course, the administrative interface should not be accessible publicly but uh, well you probably already do that if you listen uh, to uh, this podcast for a while and then we got an exploit of a newish exploit i should call it for a simpra that's apparently already being exploited in the wild simpra is an open source uh, webmail system now the vulnerability here is really an older vulnerability cve 2015-1194 and as the cve number implies well it uh, came out in 2015 was patched in 2015 the tricky part here is it's not really a Simpra vulnerability that we're talking about. Simpra is just the vector how the vulnerability is being exploited. The vulnerability is in the CPIO tool. That's a standard Linux tool and it's a general file archive tool. As so many of these file archive tools, there is a Simlink vulnerability here that could be leveraged for a remote code execution. So what's the problem here? The vulnerability was disclosed in 2015, was patched in 2015. Well, the problem is that some Linux distributions, in particular sort of the uh, CentOS-based ones, also some of the Oracle and the similar Linux distributions, decided not to include this patch in their version of CPIO. Apparently, uh, there were some reports that the patch caused some issues with initrd the system uh, to create uh, boot disks so uh, that's why they didn't include the patch and the vulnerable the version of cpio shipping with current versions of these operating systems is still vulnerable simpra uses cpio in order uh, to pass data to the ammo is uh, the antivirus scanner, and that's how it's being exploited. An attacker essentially sending an email with a malicious attachment that exploits the CPIO vulnerability as CPIO passes the data to the antivirus scanner. Well, the exploit happens and you have a remote code execution. Since there isn't really an, sort of an easy patch, like again, it's not something that Simpra would patch, it's something your Linux distribution needs to patch. There is a good workaround for it, however, and that's, well, don't use CPIO. There's another utility called PAX, and it's actually the re- preferred utility. So if you install PAX, PAX will be used, and uh, then the CPIO vulnerability no la- longer matters. And that's really what you should do, probably no mad- matter what uh, Linux distribution you are using, just to be safe. Refer to uh, Simpra's uh, advisories and such on this uh, for more details. And just as a reminder, well, uh, we have yet another update for Microsoft's uh, Exchange Server vulnerability workaround. We're still talking about the as of yet unpatched vulnerability in the Exchange Server. And Microsoft yet again sort of uh, made that uh, redirect URL rule a little bit more flexible to cover a wider variety of uh, exploit strings. 
No idea if on Tuesday we'll get a patch for this, uh, so definitely do apply the latest and greatest version of the workaround again. There are scripts available from Microsoft to make that easier. Just as a reminder that smart home devices are still not exactly secure. We have a newly disclosed vulnerability in IKEA's uh, Tratfree, if that's how you call them, smart bulbs. These lights use the Zigbee protocol and essentially what they did is they did some fussing on it. They came up with a broadcast frame and the end result is that all devices that are vulnerable in range uh, because this being a broadcast frame, can be turned to their maximum brightness, these light bulbs, and then reset, which means that the configuration is being reset, so uh, the actual user is no longer able to remote control them and adjust them. Luckily, the people who found this vulnerability uh, waited a while the original patch was released back in June. No idea how difficult and how obvious it is that uh, these bulbs need patching. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.